Welcome to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast from Discovery Park of America in Union City, Tennessee. Today's episode is brought to you by O'Bine County Tourism. Zach, and welcome to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast where we explore the history, the people, and the culture of our home in West Tennessee. I'm your host, Scott Williams. Okay, Zach, before we talk to today's really very special, special guests, what is something you have discovered at Discovery Park of America? Uh, last week, I talked about the wildflowers that we have out back. Right. But then I was out there again taking photos recently and discovered we have plums out there that were growing as well. I and did not know that. You didn't know that? I did not know <laughs> and, that. And we even have a volunteer that made some uh, plum jam out of it recently. What? It, with center office over there. <laughs> uh, well, I'm going to, A, have to get some of that plum jam to taste. Luke, did you know we had plums here? No, I, no, uh, I didn't. I didn't know we had plums back there. We're, are they like natural plums? Or are they, that's a question are I they, can't answer. Are they, let, me, let me change that question. I don't mean are they natural. I believe all plums would be natural. Are they? How did, how did are, you stumble upon the plums? Yeah, how did you just stumble uh, upon I was, the I plums? I was back there with Eric from the education department, and he he picked one off, and it was Ola's uh, boyfriend, the volunteer that made the jam out of it. I'm going to go after we record this, and I'm going to pick some, make my own jam. Um, me too. Now I'm interested. I want to see the plums. That's very interesting. Okay, so we're going to move on to today's guest. Our special guest today is Dresden native and NBA champion Papa Jones, who is now the assistant coach for the Denver Nuggets. Welcome, Coach Jones. Well, thanks for having me. First of all, I like the sound of from Dresden, Tennessee, and then I like the sound of NBA champion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the the Dresden Tennessee part came first. Tell us a, tell us yeah. about how you grew up and and how you ended up uh, being an NBA champion eventually. Well, I think that you know, for me, growing up, you know, in a small town like Dresden and uh, knowing everybody and being able, which we know society is not this way now, being able to to either walk or get on your bicycle and go to the park and meet your friends and go to the city pool in the summer and, 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 and play summer baseball and then, you know, transition into football and then the basketball as a kid and, and just do that year round and just growing up in a small town like Dresden and uh, a close uh, knit community where, you know, everybody just kind of just uh, worked and everybody kind of was everybody's kid. You know, you could, I could go in anybody's house, my friend's houses and, and, you know, as a big boy growing up and, and get in the refrigerator and, and eat food. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but, you know, I think that, you know, the biggest thing for me, and, and we know kids don't do it today, is uh, being able to play all sports. Uh, I think that was huge for me, be able to, you know, to play basketball, football and baseball. And it, it was kind of sad when I went to Murray State because I actually had to pick one and, uh, you know, and I, you know, I did pick basketball. I guess I picked the right one. Uh, and then, you know, from there, uh, the years, uh, learning how to train was huge for me because of playing three sports. I really didn't know how to train for a sport, but I learned how to train when I got to Murray State, uh, train from one sport. And uh, I just kind of ran with it from there. You know, I just kept getting better and better at the sport and got drafted and, and went overseas for a year. Uh, played really well in Italy, and and then uh, you know, Dallas Mavericks t- traded for my rights, and it kind of just kind of ballooned from there. And I ended up playing eleven years, and uh, like everybody, we know playing doesn't last forever. So I had to transition into what I was going to do next, and that next for me was I loved it so much. You know, uh, it was coaching. Uh, I knew how much work had to go into that coaching. That's different. A lot of players ex-players they could they can't transition into coaching but you know i was able to, to do it pretty seamlessly and and it's been fun you know it's been a ride it's, it's it's been a great ride i think you know winning that nba championship it made me what i just told you guys everything reflect back on all those years of um playing basketball starting out you know peewee basketball and then playing at the uh 
the uh, the little junior high gym and then playing, you know, high school basketball there in Dresden and and all the the coaches uh, from my high school coach who, you know, rest in peace to Coach West who, who was a big influence on, on me uh, in high school. And then, you know, and then all my teammates and, and, and all my friends in that class of 88 uh, from Dresden, I think you can ask a lot of people. Uh, people put that class of 88 uh, sports-wise up against a lot of uh, different classes that come out of Dresden, Tennessee. Now, now did your, uh, were your parents athletes? Did they encourage that in you and any siblings? No, it was more of my siblings. I think that if you ask anybody who, who will hear this, will hear, hear me talking to you guys, my brother was a much better athlete than me, uh, probably all of them. Uh, my oldest brother, who, who has passed away, uh, Tony, was a, was was a high school quarterback, I think, if I'm not mistaken. He was the first high school, uh, the first black high school quarterback uh, in Dresden, uh, Tennessee. And and then my brother, David, who is, is two and a half years older than me, was, uh, was an elite athlete. You know, he never went on to play anything further, but he was one of the best – High, basically elementary, junior high, and high school athletes that I had ever seen at the time. I never could beat him in anything. <laughs> now, now, question, speaking of David, um, I've seen two different stories about how you got your nickname, that your mom gave it to you or that your brother David gave it to you. What's the true story? <laughs> well, the true story is, is, is ne- neither one of them is true. I had a, another older brother who was a lot older than me, um, his, we, his, his name is James, but, you know, nicknamed Bobo, who, you know, rest in peace is not alive either. He actually gave me the, the name from the car, cartoon because the cartoon was home when I came home from the hospital and it stuck. And, uh, I guess it was the right nickname for me, right? Because people are still calling me. I just, I was just at the doctor's appointment earlier today and they was like, okay, what's your name, Ronald or Popeye? And I said, Popeye. <laughs> well that's funny so see we're, we're setting the record straight here um i've seen the story told wrong multiple places so um i'm glad we're getting that straight uh, i would say yeah you know it's, it's funny to me that you know that nickname kind of as a little boy before i even went to school kind of uh in the community of dresden kind of like you know all my friends and stuff was calling me that and and there was not many teachers believe it or not uh, as I got to school that was using Ronald a little bit when I was young, but as I started playing sports and, 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 and getting older in the middle school, then I had, you know, some of my teachers even call me Popeye, which I thought was pretty cool. And, and as I got older and went to Murray state, uh, you know, my first coach there, the first three years was coach Newton. He wouldn't call me Popeye. So he called me Ron all the time. And he was the only guy that ever called me Ron from, uh, you know, he obviously got it from Ronald. Well, there was probably thousands of Rons all around, but there was only one Popeye. So, well, his his thing was Coach Newton's thing was if I called you by your nickname, then I would have to call everybody else by theirs. So, so uh, you know, I gave him a pass, and uh, I answered to Ron the, those first three years at Murray State. <laughs> Zach, I know you got a question about high school sports. Uh, before we get to Murray State, since I'm a Murray State graduate as well, uh, I, I just oh, wanted to. Oh, yeah. So you're racing your family, Zach. Yeah, yeah ra- racing racer nation, baby. There, yes, indeed. Have, I, I did want to ask are you, do you have the records still at any of the Dresden, at any of the high school records there still? I don't think so, Zach. You know, I, I really don't know. I, I, hey, probably, I don't even think we even kept kept records back then right <laughs> I, I, I was trying to look it up myself and I, I couldn't find it so I was, I was wondering that yeah I don't think we kept records back then you know uh, for me it was just you know sports was a way of uh I always loved friendship and camaraderie and team sports and mm-hmm. uh I never thrived to be the best player you know I always wanted to win I was competitive I wanted to win, but I always, you know, I still say to this day, there was athletes in in my class that were better than me. And and one of them, uh, I'm sure you guys have heard of, is Peanut Wynn, you know, and his son Dresser. You know, it's fun to watch him right now who who's trying to, he was getting a shot with the Rams. And, you know, with us having the same owner, Denver Nuggets having the same owner as the Rams, you know, I've mentioned it to Mr. K, you know, numerous times that you have my best friend's uh, son in training camp right now and you know you guys take good care of it. now speaking of sons i know that you've got um you have uh three or four yeah well 
for for some reason, people think I'm crazy, but I started again. So <laughs> I, I I had three, but I I have a four year old now. We'll be four August 28th uh, by my second wife, and uh, he's right now getting ready to be four, but he's already eating me out of the house. So <laughs> I don't think I'll I don't think I'll be retiring soon. Now, now, what's interesting to me is that your other sons, you know, they were athletic and they pursued sports, but not basketball. Yeah, you know, it was it's really strange. I was just talking to a guy about it this morning. I had to take my truck in, and he was a big Avs, uh, Avalanche uh, a fan. He had a lot of Avalanche stuff on his wall, so I, was, I just went, I said, hey, you're a hockey fan? And he kind of took a double look at me, and he said, you're Popeye Jones. I know your boys. You know, they grew up play, They grew up playing hockey here. You know, they're in the NHL. But, you know, my whole thing with kids and kind of like myself, you know, the only three sports that was ever really, really offered to me was basketball, football, and baseball. And I, I played them all. So my thing as a father was always to, to let my kids, you know, try as many sports as they wanted to try. And, you know, my kids have played lacrosse, the older boys, that is uh, obviously soccer and then hockey and basketball and baseball and football. But it was something about when they found the sport of hockey that at first kind of kind of pissed me off at first because they were like, we don't want to play anything else. I was like, what? Whoa, 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 hold on. Wait a minute. You know, there's other things, especially in the summer. Uh, I'm like, it's time to put the hockey bags up and, you know, let's go play some golf or let's go, you know, play some baseball. But uh, hockey just kind of just really, really stuck with, with, with all three of them, Justin, Seth and Caleb, and they continued to play and they ran with it. And, you know, now you look up, you know, Seth is 28 years old and has been in the NHL for eight years and, and Caleb is 26 and has been in the NHL for uh, four years. So it's like, wow. Yeah, that's remarkable. Um, what 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 do you think you did different? You know, my kids, my I had girls, and they grew up uh -huh. playing soccer and some softball. And you know what drove me crazy are, are the parents that, oh, yeah. were, that were on the sidelines freaking out and taking it super yeah. serious. I was always super casual. You know, what what's your approach to – and you're getting ready to do it again with your yeah. youngest. You know, no, what, my, my approach was always – it's funny you said that because I think hockey – Parents are the worst because of the amount of uh, money it takes to play the sport. Mm. You know, it's a, it's a really expensive sport. And you you always hear parents say, you know, I'm using your college fund right now. And you better da, 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 you better do this. I mm. think my my approach was always like I had as a kid in in Dresden, Tennessee, to, to go out and have fun and to meet, you know, friends and to have camaraderie with 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 the team and uh yes you want to be competitive you want to win you want to work hard but i think you know i was always calm and, and and the three things that i always said was work hard be a good teammate and be coachable is it true that uh you approached uh um joe sakic in a weight room and asked for advice that is, that is very true and that and I'm working in that same building, which, you know, it used to be the Pepsi Center, and now it's Ball Arena. And where I approached him at in that weight room is now the the Nuggets kitchen where I go order my eggs at every morning. <laughs> <laughs> I get to work. But, yeah, I did because, you know, I saw the, the passion and the interest in the sport. And, you know, I just wanted to, to them to, you know, I think my, maybe that's probably where my competitive nature set in at. When I told them to work hard, I said, okay. If this is what you want to do, then we'll see the best way for you to do this where you can be on the top teams in the state of Colorado and play against the, the top competition. So I asked Joe, I said, went up to him and said, you know, it's funny now, me and Joe, I just saw him probably uh, three months ago and we still laugh about it because he's the president of the Avs, Avalanche now here. And uh, I asked him, I said, you know, my boys want to play hockey. What the heck do I need to do? And he looked down at me, you know, and Joe Sacker is like 5'10", 5'11". And he looked up at me and, and shook his head and was like, you need to teach them how to skate because I'm looking at you and they're going to be huge. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I went home I went home and told them that. I said, hey, I was talking because they were huge Avalanche fans, obviously. It was Avalanche craze around here uh, when we moved to Colorado. And uh, so I went home and told him, I said, hey, I was talking to Joe Sacker today. And he said, if you want to be – really good hockey players, you got to become good skaters. 
And they they were all eyes, and they was like, well, what we need to do? I said, well, he said, you need to take skating lessons. So, you know, we searched out, uh, me and my wife at the time searched out some of the best skating um, instructors around, and we found a lady who who not only uh, taught hockey players, but she taught figure skating coach or uh, figure skating uh, uh, teaching as well. And she taught them how to skate, and it was the best thing that's ever happened to them. And, you know, just them being natural athletes, using a stick and a ball, you know, that came natural. But uh, learning to skate is the big thing that you have to learn to do if you want to be a great hockey player. That does bring up a question for me. Have you yourself ever put on the skates? You know, it's funny you you asked that because I have a great, great story about that. So they kept after me when they were kids about, hey, Dad, you got to get on the ice with us and see. It's really fun. It's mm-hmm. really fun. So I started, like, looking, okay, where can I find some skates at, obviously? I wore a size 17. <laughs> And I was like, okay. And so I went to the hockey shop and the, the people were like, let's sit off and see, can they make you a pair? So they actually made me a pair of hockey skates. And then I was like, okay, I need a stick. And the sticks weren't long enough because obviously you need a really long stick um, for me. And so they put up like an eight inch extender into a stick and we got out there on the ice and I went around one lap and got off. And I've never been, (laughs) and I've never been back out there again. And and to this day, I have no idea where those skates and where that stick is. (laughs) That's hilarious. So, so you've obviously you've navigated yourself from, uh, you know, our little neighborhood of Dresden nearby um, to the top of your field. What what inspiration do you owe that to? You know, what do you feel like propelled you uh, to that place? Uh, just seeing the work ethic that, um, my parents that they had when I was a young boy, you know, we didn't have a a lot, but you saw them go to get up, go to work every day and, uh, provide meals from us. And I think that, you know, just seeing that hard work really helped. And then the second part of that is, you know, coach West always talked to me about, you know, if you worked hard at basketball, the sky is the limit, the sky is the limit, you know, if you work, but. You know, I never had time to work because I was playing basketball, football and baseball. And then when I went to Murray State and, you know, and chose basketball to see, you know, to be able to work uh, as hard as I did at one sport and and how I was able to just keep getting better and better and better. I think that just that has helped me along that I understand that, hey, you may not always reach your goals, but if you work hard every day then you can get pretty darn close to 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 being as successful as you want to be and you know it's something that i've always instilled in my kids and and you know they still do it they're actually here this week my older boys at a a hockey pro camp so i haven't seen them since the season ended so i'm excited to see them tonight uh and they are they're i call them more modern day athletes the way they they train in the off season uh, eat right, sleep right, do do all the right things to prepare for the season. So you you've seen at this point you've seen thousands of athletes. I'm just curious, as somebody who moved to a rural community from an urban setting, do you see any difference between the athletes uh, that you coach, depending on whether they're from the city or the more rural areas? Well, you know, it's funny you ask that. You you do sometimes. Sometimes you see. Uh, athletes who have been set, put at the top of the pedestal when they're 13, 14 years old, when they come from big cities, that they're the best, best players in the world. And sometimes those guys, those kids, you know, when they're that age and, and they're told that, you know, hey, we're I'm the best in, the, you know, in America, in the U.S. or whatever, or I'm one of the best. Those kids don't uh, they, they never get to understand how hard. They need to work because they're so talented at a young age. And a lot of times those kids, they, you know, they don't make it to be professional athletes because they just they don't get it. You see more of the guy, the mediocre guy, kids, uh, you know, when they're kids, they're still learning the game. They're working hard. Those kids seem to me seem to be uh, make it at, at the professional level more. And obviously you're going to have standouts, as we all know, like the LeBron James type guys who, you know, would, but he had a, he had. As you look back at him, as you guys know, he had big feel, shoes to fill because of all the hype surrounding him. Sometimes that's even harder. But mm. if you look at his work ethic, it's uh, it's you know he works harder than 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 the fifteenth guy on the team, and obviously he's been the best for a long time in the NBA. Uh, speaking of big shoes, what 
What about Joker out there for you guys? Is, is oh, he one of the hardest workers you got too? I know he also <laughs> likes to go home, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny you ask that because not only is he one of the hardest workers, he is one of the best human beings that I've I've ever met um, in my life. Mm-hmm. Just just a great, humble human being, a great family man. His wife is. His daughter, his brothers, his mom. He, he is just a great human being. My wife always gets on to me because I've said it in press conference, this what I'm getting ready to say. But if I did have a daughter, I would want them to bring Nikola Jokic home <laughs> and said, I'm going to marry this guy. <laughs> and that's the type of guy that he is. And, and, but w- when you have a guy like that, as you, you guys know, on, within a team sport, uh, if you're not – selfless and uh, have the humility as a guy like that has and the type of guy he is, then you would stick out, you'll stick out like a sore thumb. And so that's what makes, you know, to me, um, the Denver Nuggets such a great organization that you have a guy like that as your best player. Well, uh, when, when you guys won the championship, uh, the TV, of course, got, got you talking to him and just saying, Hey, thank you. Thank you. So just, I was just wondering what was going through your mind at that moment. I'm sure quite a bit of stuff, but. Oh yeah. You know what? That is a great question. Cause I've actually answered that question before, um, you know, and, and I said it earlier here on the podcast, I thought back personally to uh, as a kid playing on the basketball court in our neighborhood, uh, which, uh, which is like, for me is the Mecca because when I was a little boy to see all the older kids playing on that court in our neighborhood and then to keep growing and then for them to finally start to let me play. And obviously I talked about my brother, David, they let him play before me. I used to make me mad as I was to sit on the sideline. So he got to play with the older boys before me uh, to see that. To, I thought back to that. I thought back to uh, the little junior high gym that I first, which is still standing um, in Dresden. I thought about to playing there from Pee Wee League to, to middle school. Uh, then I thought back to obviously high school with Coach West and to staying after practices and him making me jump that weighted rope and him beating me in horse after practices a lot of times uh, to the days at Murray State and then to all my years in the NBA. Mm-hmm. All that kind of like flashed back with me to me within a minute. And then, you know, and then uh, I was getting ready to cry and I wanted to go to Joker and be like, rah, 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 we did it. We NBA champions. But it was like I was a little baby. I just went, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. Yeah. So nothing would come out. I couldn't even say rah, rah, rah. So. <laughs> That's great. Um, yeah. So we're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to ask one more question when we get back. Okay, sounds good. If you're searching for a fun road trip this fall, look no further than O'Bion County, Tennessee. From eagles to white squirrels and sunken cypress trees to dinosaurs, The entire region is filled with unique experiences and attractions just waiting to be explored. You'll find one-of-a-kind hotels, restaurants, wineries, and orchards, along with a charming downtown filled with shops. And of course, no visit to Obion County is complete without a stop at Discovery Park of America. To plan your trip, go to obioncounty.org slash visit. I hope you're enjoying the Real Foot Forward podcast from Discovery Park of America. If you are, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and leave a positive review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. This is your host, Scott Williams, and our guest today is NBA champion Papa Jones, the assistant coach for the Denver Nuggets. So here's our final question for you. I'm curious, uh, you obviously have a lot of pressure on you and, and you've got a little kid now and you've got the older kids and uh, what do you do to deal with all the pressure and how do you unwind, you know, how do you relax? Uh, uh, give us a little bit of life coaching. That's, that's fine. Well, I'm still a country boy at heart. They just don't have, I just didn't get into fly fishing when I was growing up in Dresden, but my new hobby is to, go up in the mountains and go hiking and 
you know, find this nice remote stream. And and I'm not great at fly fishing. A lot of times I don't even catch anything. I'll come home. My wife is like, you catch anything? And I'll go, no. And she'll go, that's what I thought. <laughs> I've been, I, <laughs> I've got into fly fishing. I've been doing it now for two years and I've caught two fish. So that gives you perspective of how good I am at fly fishing. <laughs> uh, but, you know, just the mountains for me in the summer is how I do unwind. And then from there, uh, obviously having another little one is spending a ton of time with him. I think that, you know, at my age to have a, another kid, I think that what it does to you, it, you understand that, uh, you understand time a little bit more and you understand that we all only have so much time on this earth. So I try to, if I'm not working, I try to spend as much time with him. Hey man, I really appreciate you giving us the time yeah. today and and talking to us. This has been really special for us. Yeah, and I, yeah, and I apologize for last week. That was totally on me out. Where I, again, I just told you where I didn't have phone service. Hey, listen, we can relate. Um, <laughs> next time you get in the neighborhood, be sure you come by and visit Discovery Park. Okay, well, when I, I'll you know I'll, I'll tell you when I'll be there. I'll be there uh, probably next. Uh, summer around August, probably, uh, I, probably around that time. So I'll hit you guys up, probably the first of August. Around. Yeah, please do. We'll roll out the red carpet for you um, and uh, show you what uh, Discovery Park is all about. Awesome! Thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks to all of you listeners who've joined Zach and me today at Discovery Park of America. Our mission here is to inspire children and adults to see beyond. To plan an experience here for you and your family, visit discoveryparkofamerica.com. Discovery Park of America.